The moon is a familiar sight in the sky, and it has almost always been the Earth's constant companion. Their history started billions of years ago at the beginning of our solar system, with an incredible impact. In the chaos of the early solar system, a Mars-sized object known as Theia slammed into the young Earth, launching an enormous amount of debris into space. Over time, the Earth reformed, and the Moon formed from the debris locked in orbit of the Earth. Over the following 4 billion years, the Moon shaped our world, guided evolution, and it has inspired our own culture. But to astronomers like me, it's just a glorified disco ball in the night sky, and we hate it. The Moon really screws up our data, and without it we'd be able to observe distant faint galaxies every night. So what if we made the moon disappear? And I do mean disappear, because if we blow it up, they'll just cause a lot of dust and debris, which would probably be worse for astronomers, and everyone else, than just the moon. So let's just make it disappear. To do this, let's return to our simulated universe, where last time we turned the sun into a black hole. And although that didn't go so well for us, it was a good learning experience. But this time, let's use our simulation and our understanding of nature to see if we could get away with removing the moon. So, with a click of my fingers, I'll fulfill the wildest dream of every astronomer and make the moon disappear. In three, two, one. And just like that, the Earth's constant companion over the last four billion years is gone. But what has actually happened? It kind of seems like nothing much has changed, but we've actually just caused a catastrophe for life across the world, particularly for life in the oceans. You see, the processes of life are regulated by biological clocks. These clocks aren't perfect and run either slow or fast, and constantly need to be reset by regular and reliable environmental cues to stay on time. On the land, these cues usually take the form of sunlight, but in the ocean, the tides are ever more regular and reliable, and the moon is largely responsible for these tides. Before it disappeared, the moon's gravitational pull alongside the sun's tugged at the Earth's surface. Like in this exaggerated diagram, the moon's pull encouraged the oceans to be higher in the directions pointing both directly toward and directly away from the moon. Although the oceans want to line up neatly with the moon, they can't, because the oceans are too shallow and the land masses get in the way. Instead, the moon's pull forces the tides into a complex but regular and reliable pattern. For many species in the oceans, this reliable pattern is what sets their biological clocks. With the moon suddenly gone, only the sun's gravitational pull remains. And although the sun is 27 million times more massive than the moon, its pull is much weaker than the moon's, because it is much further away from us. Without the moon, the force driving the tides is reduced to a third, and the ocean dynamics will change entirely. There will still be tides, but now the tidal clock ticks very differently. Without the moon, creatures that rely on tides will struggle, and entire ecosystems will collapse. Seasonal migrations and breeding will fall out of sync, and if they can't quickly adapt to just the tick of the sun's tidal clock, they may all face extinction. So it seems that by removing the moon, we've made an ecological catastrophe. We're off to a good start. But so far we've only looked at the immediate aftermath. But what is the impact on longer timescales? If we watch for tens of thousands of years, we'll see something else pretty drastic happen. And it's to do with the Earth's spin. In general, the Earth's spin axis is tilted and this is what gives us the seasons. But over a 40,000 year period, the Earth's tilt will vary between 22 and 24.5 degrees, and this changing tilt is known as the Milankovitch cycle. These shifts in the Earth's tilt change where the sun's energy falls on the Earth. If a hemisphere is tilted toward the sun, it will experience summer, and if it's tilted away, winter. If the tilt is close to zero, both hemispheres will receive the same amount of energy, meaning the seasons will be the same. If instead the tilt is larger, the energy difference will be greater, and the seasons will be more extreme. It turns out that the cycle of the Earth's tilt is actually pretty stable, and that's because of the Moon. 
Without the mediating gravitational pull of the moon to stabilize the Earth's tilt, it will change a lot more, perhaps even 10 times more. Between the extreme swings the seasons will change a lot, and so too will the natural climate cycles. This time life both in the oceans and on the land will need to adapt. In this case the adaptation isn't so dramatic, since these changes will take place over many thousands of years, which is the same time scale that evolution through natural selection acts on. So by removing the moon we've actually made the earth spin axis unstable, and as a side effect forever changed the long term climate patterns, but I guess we're already pros at changing the earth's climate. It would take changes in the earth's tilt thousands of years to achieve the climate change that we've managed to do in just a century. But perhaps on a positive note, we'll also stop the days from getting longer. You see the length of a day hasn't always been 24 hours, it used to be much faster. Likewise the moon used to be much closer to the earth. Over the course of billions of years, the dynamical friction between the earth and moon caused by the ocean tides made the moon recede from the earth, and increased the length of the day from mere hours to the familiar 24 hours. Each year the moon continues to recede by about 4 centimeters per year, and the length of a day gets ever so slightly longer. Without the moon and its tides, we keep the length of a day to 24 hours, and keep all of our clocks useful until the end of the world. So one good thing at least. So it seems that just by removing the moon we've changed an awful lot. And as fun and interesting as astronomy may be, I'm not sure it's worth an ecological catastrophe and long term chaos with the Earth's tilt. Without the moon, we also lose opportunity. The opportunity to build an outpost from which humanity could easily launch its exploration of the solar system. We could even construct great new telescopes on the moon, free from the Earth's atmosphere and the moon's glow. Without the moon, we are even more isolated in the void of space. But with the moon, we can test the shallows of the cosmic ocean, and perhaps we may even wade out further if the waters seem inviting. Thanks for making it to the end of the video, and a special thanks to D Curtis for suggesting I make a video on what would happen if the moon were removed. It's pretty interesting to see all of the subtle ways that the moon actually interacts with the entire ecosystem of the earth. But if you enjoyed this video, please like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have suggestions for videos you want me to do in the future, leave them in the comments below. I try and read all of the comments that I get, and reply to at least some of them. So again, thanks for watching.